Hello students, welcome back. Mr. Rowell here once again with our spaceship tutorial part three. In the end of our last tutorial, we had something kind of finicky going on and I've tracked it down. I was jumping a step ahead of myself here. Um, something that is important to try and realize is how these constructors work. In the last tutorial, we ended by doing something that we normally do by creating a private variable, maybe called damage, to set the damage of this. But here's the thing, is that if I'm trying to access this damage, in my constructor, there's going to be some problems happening because I cannot reference damage before the constructor has been called. Here's why. This constructor is what tells the program all of this information. It's what creates this object. I can't send it information that hasn't been created yet to create it. Right? That's kind of like trying to call a friend and having them pick up the phone before I've actually dialed them. They need the information sent to them in terms of the ring before they know to pick up. And then we can continue the conversation. I can't start the conversation expecting them to know in advance before I call them. It's like it's jumping a step of logic. And we can't do that. So instead of using a private variable here, we now have to just use the number that we want to send for the damage, in which case for our laser is going to be 1. So now we have our laser set up properly here. What's going to happen when we create our laser? It's going to create itself using the constructor for projectile. And I'm sending it the information the projectile constructor needs. The speed and the damage. The speed is customized by the input. The damage is preset for all lasers that will be the same as one damage. And then when the laser acts, it's going to act using the behavior it borrows from projectile, which is moving with its speed, which for laser will be whatever we send it, and it's going to check the boundaries based off of the information stored here. No copying and pasting needed. It can access it directly because it's a child class. We want to do the same thing for Fireball. So far in your Fireball class, you should have just kind of empty information, no acting or anything. We want to create a constructor. Fireball. Now, first of all, make sure you've actually set the image of your Fireball to the Fireball. Double check that. You're going to have some weird things going on later. Now let's think how we want to create this fireball. We want to do it in a similar way. We want to get the information for the speed sent to the constructor, and then we want to access the super constructor of our projectile, which is expecting the speed as well as the damage. Let's make the fireball do five damage instead. Now, in terms of how it's going to act, the fireball is going to behave in the same way the laser does. It's going to use the act method of its superclass or projectile. But in this case, in this move, it uses the unique speed for our fireball, which is whatever we send to it in the constructor. Later on, it will have a unique damage being calculated as well, although we haven't implemented any interactions for damage just yet. So with this setup, we now have our code in place to create fireballs and lasers. And just really make note of this. All of the busy code for the rules of a projectile are in our projectile class. The fireball and the laser are very simple. They're simply just noting the unique attributes these different items have. Everything else they're borrowing from the template that defines the rules for anyone. Now we can add as many projectiles as you want. You will be adding on the one for missile on your own as well as any others that you want to add. But before you go into that, let's just make sure we know how to get this up and running here. We're creating these weapons as a part of our hero. We've already previously defined shooting a basic laser. But here's where we have to think about another layer. We now have two different projectiles. Which one are we shooting with space? Well, space is just shooting down a laser. So really, this isn't just shooting. This is now shoot laser. It's more specialized. And I have to update this in kind. So how do we get it to shoot a fireball? Well. I'm going to have a new method. Instead of shoot laser, I'm going to call this shoot fireball. And now, rather than creating lasers, I want it to create a new fireball object. Fireball, fireball equals new fireball. And remember, I send it the speed. Let's make the fireball slower. Now, instead of setting the laser's rotation, I must set the fireball's rotation. And instead of adding the laser, I must add the fireball. So I can now shoot a fireball. 
let's set up some code to do so. If else, if we're not currently shooting a laser, now you could have them shoot at the same time if you wanted. I don't want them to shoot at the same time, so I'm gonna say if else, if key down is for fireball, let's go with F. Seems to make sense. If F is pressed down, shoot fireball. Oh, else if. Of course, else if. Seems like our code's in place. Let's give it a whirl, see how this goes. If I press spacebar, my laser's being shot. And if I press F, and note, there's no limitation on how fast it shoots. So it looks kind of funny at the center of my ship. We can always edit these things later. I just want to make sure it's up and running. While I'm shooting a laser, I can't shoot a fireball. But once I stop shooting a laser, I can now shoot a fireball. Cool. Your task, try and get a missile implemented with its own unique attributes, and also play around with these things. And if you want to really challenge yourself, consider. This laser, maybe it's fine for a laser to shoot so rapid fire, but a fireball definitely looks pretty silly. How could we get this to shoot more slowly? We're gonna have a tutorial about that in our next lesson, but maybe you wanna try and solve this problem on your own in advance to really just test how you're doing with this logic. What you should have in place before our next class for the next tutorial is a ship that's able to move with the mouse tracking it, and at least three different projectiles that travel at different speeds. Now note, my laser overtakes my fireball because its speed is different, faster speed for the laser. At least three different projectiles in place working properly and deleting themselves when they reach the edge of the world. And if you want to extend yourself a little bit further, a couple things that you can try is actually having the rate of fire be able to be adjusted, as well as, here's an interesting one, there's different control schemes you've defined so far. What if you actually programmed to have a button, maybe the, the Z button, for example, that you could have to swap between different control schemes for those who want some customization to their gameplay? Maybe that's something you want to try and add in while you're waiting for others to catch up if you're a little bit ahead. Give it a try. Let me know if you need a hand. See you in the next tutorial.